Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Shadowraith and today we are going to be visiting the host of the Dragon Emperor. So, basically if you saw my previous video, I kind of like went through with uh, me and Arash and uh, of course we had uh, Matt with us. Uh, we just flew through all the Legendary Legion, but I'm going to do a separate series of videos where I take a deep dive. And we recently did an Easterling Legendary, uh, well not Legendary Legion, Army Review. So I thought... Let's have a proper look at these boys. Let's see what they can do now. And, I mean, I'm quite happy. They've got a big buff. It's absolutely fantastic. I don't know what you think. I mean, let me know in the comment section down below after this video. Uh, if you weren't a fan, maybe I'll convince you after this, but we'll see. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay, so the Hose of the Dragon Emperor is a legendary legion in the defense of the North Supplement book, okay? Which is quite a good book. I'm quite happy with it ish um so what do we get well of course we get the dragon emperor himself okay he's rocking in at a staggering 170 points that's so cheap it's absolutely mental i'll go through him in a minute okay we've got rutabai uh general of the dragon legion which is her right here she's 110 points fantastic and then we've got eastling dragon knights we know what they are you can give them a horse in there it's 15 points it's armored eastling captains all the usual stuff. Eastling War Priest, 60 points. Eastling Warrior, 7 points per. You can upgrade them for Black Dragons for 2 points. All the usual stuff. Eastling Cataphract and Dragon Cult Acolyte for 11 points. And then we've got an, a, something called a Runish Wardrake, which is 20 points. Um, no one knows what that is. It doesn't even have a base size. And of course we've got... Uh, I, I saved this to last because I'm going to butcher it. Uh, Broagir. Broagir. The Kundra Dude. Yeah, he's cool. I like him. Okay, that's the army composition. Okay, additional rules. Host of Dragon Emperor Force must include the Dragon Emperor of Rune. And he's always the army leader. Makes sense. He's the Dragon Emperor. Okay, what special rules do we get? Well, Eastern Warriors and Eastern Cataphract in the Warband lent by the Dragon Emperor. Great. Which is absolutely fantastic. So, you might see something similar to what I've got here, which is... An 18 man strong pike block of black dragons. Insane. I mean, you probably like shave some of these off and have um, cataphracts, but meh is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's really good. Really good because um, seven points for an Eastern Warrior, add two points, eight, nine points. They didn't stack up to other nine point models in the game. Straight away, I'm thinking of like the standard elf, um, also the black Numenorian. I think they're nine points as well. They just they just did not stack up. They it, they weren't worth their points. I didn't think, at all. So this is awesome, but it's only in his warband, which kind of sucks. Heroes of the Easterlings, they all get to re-roll a d6 in the uh, for their dual roll. So all Easterling heroes, so Dragon Emperor, Rutabai, Captain, everything. So they've all got their own personal banner, which stacks really well with the Dragon Emperor himself, which we'll go ahead and talk about in a minute. And then we've got no quarter was asked. It's their army bonus, so they get plus one courage when their force is broken, and you can make them. Re you can choose your opponent to re-roll the dice if, or you can re-roll the dice if the scenario would end. Cool, very nice. But what do we get? Okay, I said learn names at you. What do they actually do? Well, let's find out. Starting off strong, we've got the Dragon Emperor of Rune. Like I said before, 170 points, and may I just say again, model absolutely stunning. Okay. I mean, these mega chads down here, like lifting him. Wow. Okay. That, that's got to take some muscle strength. They're not strength four. Okay. There you go. Spoiler. Shame. But whatever. Like the fat he's carrying an old man, they're strength four for the uh, Golden King. But no, nope, these boys doesn't count. So, his, he's a hero of legend, of course, because he's a, he's a damn emperor. Uh, he's got a movement of six when he's off his, I'm, I'm going to butcher the name, Palanquin. Palanquin. There we go. But it's also six inches because, you know, they're carrying him. Um, he's fight six, which is awesome. Shoot value four plus. Strength four. Defense seven. Three attack, three wounds. Courage six. He's got three might, three will, and three fate. Fantastic, okay? Right. He comes with heavy armor, the Emperor's Glaive, Helm of the Dragon Emperor, and the Royal Palaqu Palanquin. Okay? So it just comes built in. You don't need to upgrade it, which is interesting because I, I thought it'd be an upgradable thing but I guess 170 points for him on his own would kind of suck so yeah um, and they count as a single model for the purposes of working out uh, forces breakpoint awesome 
Very nice. Now, the Emperor's Glaive, what does that do? Well, it's an active ability, and it's Elven Maid Spear, and he can use the Faint Special Strike. Cool, that's really cool. Additionally, the Bearer may use the Shielding Special Rule, even though it does not have a shield. So, he's a bit tankier. That's quite nice, I like that. Uh, shielding is very important, especially if you've got, like, I don't know, Azog in your face, or something like that. And you just want to shield him away, so you just spin your glaive around really fast, I guess. I like that. And the Dragon Emperor rune may not support what's mounted upon his royal palaquin. Okay, of course, that makes sense. I mean, I could stab over someone's shoulder, but yeah, that'd be cra kind of crazy. Plus, who needs that? You know, who needs him? You've got pikes for that. Okay, the Helm of the Dragon Emperor gives him resistance to magic. So, he's not so easily shut down by spells, because he's got three will, and he gets a free one to resist each time. Very nice. Okay, that's very, very nice. He's a hobbit. Uh, yeah, very nice. I like that. He's got his heroic actions, which is heroic resolve, heroic strike, yes, heroic strength, and heroic defense. My two favorite, strike and defense. So he's very tanky if he needs to be. And he can outfight those big scary dudes out there. He's got phalanx, just in case you want to cut about on foot. Sure, why not? And Emperor of the Easterlings. Another active ability. Um, friendly Eastling models will benefit from the Dragon Emperor's stand fast, regardless of range. This will also affect friendly Easterling hero models. That is really good. It's going to be really hard to get rid of your opponent because all your troops, pretty much, apart from like the Acolytes, are like defense six. And then when they do break, they're plus one courage. And then on top of that, they can use this guy stand fast anywhere on the battlefield. That's nuts. I love it. It's awesome. Is there any warriors that get the army bonus? It might be all Easterlings, in which case it's Courage 7, in which case you're never running away. Very nice. Now, the Royal Palanquin. Okay. So, like I said before, move six inches, because, you know, you've got six blokes carrying it. Um, they're fight four, because they're black dragons. They're strength three, defense six. Uh, asterisks for attacks. We'll get into that in a minute. They've got six wounds, because there's six bods, and Courage 4. And, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'll save it for in a minute. <laughs> that's pretty cool um, I think they all come with swords and shields yeah they do uh, they don't take up any space in the Dragon's Emperor's Warband so you get six free dudes so you could just dismount and have six extra dudes running about if you wanted not that you wanted to because you get a load of cool stuff with this yeah so this mount for the Dragon uh, it's mount for the Dragon Emperor but he's not uh, normal cavalry therefore not confer the cavalry keyword instead he'll be treated as an infantry model which is awesome for like seize the prize he can like slowly like move his way up being carried like a boss and then dig something out of the ground um yeah i like that that's quite cool but then cavalry get like bonuses when they charge you and stuff whilst the royal palaquin has three or more wounds remaining it moves as normal if it's reduced to two it moves three inches if it only has a single wound then it cannot move at all that's because one chad is carrying him one dude on his shoulders okay so cut him some slack he's not going to move at that point, you just get off, don't you? Be a bit shaky. Uh, when the palaquin is hit by shooting attacks, the shooter must take an in-the-way test to determine if he hits the Dragon Emperor or the palanquin itself. On a 1-4, to four hits the palaquin. On a 5+, plus hits Dragon Emperor. So you've got 5 up in the way, so you can't just get sniped. Too pretty easy. I mean, heroic accuracy is a thing. But still, that's awesome. Just don't take, like, a mortal, like, bow throw to face. <laughs> it's, it's not going to go well. Um, if the Dragon Emperor dismounts from the Royal Palanquin for any reason, or is slain whilst riding the Palanquin, replace the Palanquin with a number of black dragons equal. Yeah, so, yeah, you got dudes, they just act normal. You basically get six black dragons in the pal. you remove that model and add six dudes, okay? They don't run away, they don't have to test like they're a horse or anything like that. Unlike other mounts, the Dragon Emperor does not use any of the characteristics of the uh, Palanquin. Instead, he always uses his own set, cool, yep, that makes sense. Even if one of the palanquins is better, which is not, I guess, attacks. I don't know. Yeah, um, we'll see in a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, if the dragon emperor wins a dual roll, except when shielding, then in addition to his own strikes, the palanquin makes a number of strikes equal to its remaining wounds. These strikes are always resolved after those of the dragon emperor and cannot make any special strikes. So you can't be fainting whilst like carrying this dude on you. That's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, you get six extra attacks because the six dudes get stuck in whilst carrying and they're not strength for. Like, I mean, go and like pick up a tire and then start dueling your friend. 
and tell me you're not at least dreamt for. Okay, go away, silly thing. Um, anyway, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, he cannot be not prone for any reason unless he's directly hit by a siege engine. So that sucks. Uh, yeah, have fun with that. Um, I mean. That's good, I guess. You can't be hurled, because that's my first thought. I was like, I'm just going to hurl something into him and it fall off. Or Sorceress Blast, or things like that. But no, just Siege Engines do it, because... Sure, that makes sense. If you're taking like a full, like, twiddly widdly to the face, um, yeah, you're going to fall off. He cannot be affected by Hurl or Barge, Brutal Power Attacks. Additionally, uh, will not be moved by Sorceress Blast, Cool Wind, although it still suffer any other effects, if applicable. That's really good. Hmm, what happens if you paralyze him? That would suck. Because it just says he can't be moved. Because he gets prone? He can't be not prone for any reason. Okay, cool. So he won't be prone. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I guess he's still paralyzed, but he's still on there. I don't know. Cool. Just don't paralyze him. Like, I don't know. Uh, standards of the Emperor is a special rule, which is passive. It's a 12 inch banner. That's insane. Okay. Um, yeah, the Dragon Emperor Rune and the Black Dragons do not suffer the minus one penalty for carrying the banner either. So, yeah, I mean, the thing itself, I mean, they're already carrying it. If anyone was going to get minus one to wound, it would be these boys carrying him. No, oh, not wound, uh, jewel roll. Uh, oh well. In the name of the Emperor, friendly Eastling warriors within six of the Royal Palaquin and can draw line of sight to it, gain a bonus of plus one to their fight value. Yay! That's awesome. So, like I said, it's a good stack because you get. Black Dragons for free. So suddenly you're what, fight four? And then suddenly you're fight five. So you've got fight five, pipe block. Very tasty. I like that a lot. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, competitiveness, I reckon he's at least an eight. Because like even if you don't run the Legendary Legion, this guy's going to be an ally. Because he's a 12 inch banner. Like, can't be knocked pro, can't be like blasted off. 170 points. He's You're going to see him in a few lists, I reckon. Because, I mean, A, it's an awesome model, and B, his rules are really good. So, yeah, can you... Uh, I don't even know. Like, like running around with a Mordor list with a 12-inch banner, that's just crazy. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, so, moving on. Here we have the love of my life. Um, Rutabai, General of the Dragon Legion. 110 points, like I said before. I know I've already covered her, but we're going to cover her again, because... I want to, because she's gorgeous. Um, movement 6, fight 6, uh, 4 plus shoot value, strength 4. She's strength 4, that's awesome. Defense 7, 3 attack, 3 wounds, courage 5. 3 might, 2 will, 2 fate. Uh, comes with heavy armor, sword and shield. Has strike and challenge. Master of battle 3 plus. Mwah, perfect. Unyielding combat stance, which uh, I think if she would be not prone, she rolls a dice and a 4 plus, she's not. She's got the phalanx, so she can like stand in the front of a pipe block and not be trapped and show no mercy when making strikes against enemy model that is trapped you can reroll fail to win so if you manage to do trap something which you can do so if you stick her in the front of a pipe block or something and then swing like a cataphract or two round then that person's trapped if she's fighting a hero even better and she can go stabby stabby time awesome i love her um yeah just give me a second where are you where are you where are you i've got you here somewhere there you are. Come here, little sausage. Oh, she's floating. That's how much better she is. Okay. With the Dragon Emperor and Rutabai, I mean, we can just, yeah, get rid of this dude. Yeah. Get out of here. No one wants you. Um, yeah. Cool. On to the next one. That was a seamless edit. Cool. So we got Broger. Grogu, I don't know. The Gundra, 80 points. I love this dude. He's so cool. Okay, so he is a hero of fortitude. Oh, um, Rutabai was a hero of valor, by the way. Um, yeah, fight three, because he's not a fighter. He's a lover, not a fighter. Uh, strength three, same again. Defense five, that's pretty good for a caster. One attack, two wounds, courage four. He's got two might, which is solid. Five will, wow, super shaman. And two fate. Okay, comes with heavy armor and Eastling battle stave, which is the same as the uh, War Priest. It can be used as a spear or a two handed axe, so you can suddenly be strength for and plus one to wound if you really want. Cool, why not? Um, but I can imagine you'd be spear supporting more than anything. And then Sorcerer's Adept is his special rule, and he's got channeling. Um, if he rolls a natural six, we're making a casting test. 
he will regain a single point of will after resolving the effects of the magical power. So it's like resisting in reverse. So if you're good at rolling sixes, bring this little sausage. So magical powers. He's got Blade Wrath, which is 12 inch range, cast on a 2 plus, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. That makes, like, you pick a dude, they become, like, pick a model within 12 inches, in this case. They become strength 6. If you channel it, they're strength 10. That's pretty good. Fury Easterlings, we know what Fury does. Um, do we care about Fury? Uh, yeah, against Angmar and stuff like that, I guess. Um, uh, it's only Easterlings, so, I mean, that's all you can bring. <laughs> Enchanted Blades, 12 inches, uh, 4 plus to cast. Um, that is plus one to wound. No, that is reroll to wound. If you channel it, it's plus one to wound. Oh, my memory is good. And then you've got Tremor, six inches, uh, cast on a five. So that's where you do like a six inch line. If it goes across anyone, they take a certain amount of damage and they get knocked prone. Very good against cavalry. I love it. And um, yeah, just saying, okay. See this little sausage here? Staring right into his like side of his head. Yeah, why would you bring him when you can bring this absolute majestic being and get out of here, War Priest? That is the last time we're going to see a War Priest on the list. Like, the only upside to bringing a War Priest over this sausage is, I think, yeah, it can take a horse. That's it. So, Grogu! And here we have the Dragon Cult Acolyte. Okay, and this little sausage is a tricky one for me. I get some people that swear by him, saying, yep, he's he's amazing, awesome. Um, but I don't know. Okay, I'm a bit hesitant. But he's 11 points, okay? And what do you get for 11 points? Well, he's move 6. If he was move 8, like, anyway, I'll save that for the end. Um, he's fight 4, 4 plus shoot value, strength 3, defense 4, 2 attacks, 1 wound and courage 4. He's got armor, throne daggers, big yes, and 2 swords. He's got unyielding combat stance, some shenanigans, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. Supreme Agility is his special rule as well. Uh, a model with this special rule gains a plus two bonus to jump, leap, and climb tests. Additionally, a model with this special rule will automatically pass all in the way tests when he's striking, a uh, model defending a barrier or a doorway. Okay, so that's not too bad. Right. My big gripe is 11 points is quite expensive. Why would I take this dude over, say, a Dragon Warrior with a pike and a shield? Um... I don't know. Uh, he's got two attacks and throwing weapons. Hey, where you going, my boy? Why is that lava? Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, like he's got two attacks and throwing daggers. Um, you can surprise people by suddenly like you're bombing like over a thing and just charging them because you need a four plus to be able to charge over walls and stuff. That's pretty cool. I like that. But he's pretty low defense at defense four. That's insane. That's Haradrim defense. Yeah, let me know your experiences with him, because I honestly don't know. So, talking about shenanigans, right? Okay, where are you, bro? Bro, guru, grogu, grogu. Come here. Get there. Stand next to love, mate. Come on, you're embarrassing me. You're on camera. Okay. So this guy's got a little spell called Tremor that like knocks everyone prone. Okay. So you could cast it because if it hits combat, it knocks everyone prone. You could kind of cast it into a combat with a bunch of deeds dudes. And suddenly, these dudes get to roll and on a full plus, they're not, not prone. And then they just get to stab the poor sausage on the floor. Again, on top of that, it also works if you, like, ally in Sorcerer's Blast or anything that knocks people prone. Okay? Because you could get knocked prone and then suddenly on a full plus, like, everyone in the combat's not prone, but you roll a full plus for this sausage and he's suddenly double striking, which means he's rolling four strength three attacks at that poor sausage which he could probably faint or stab if he wanted to that's that's pretty cool that's pretty tasty i like that so that's the legendary legion and the new heroes all summed up for you okay um i quite like it okay um it's really cool because you're now matching tying fight with things like elves downside is the only other thing apart from heroes that is fight five has something called an elven blade so you're probably still going to lose those jewels but the good side is you're probably rolling one more dice slash two more dice because you'd have a 12 inch freaking banner which just i mean i'm in range over here that's how big it is that's meant excuse me get out of here no one likes you okay so having a pipe block of black dragons with the dragon emperor 
I think is absolutely key as a core to your army. Um, yeah, I mean, they're free to be Black Dragons, so you might as well. They're better courage, better weapon skill. So they go up to like Courage 4, Courage 5 when you're broken, um, Fight 4, Fight 5 when they're near him, which is 6 inches, so they don't have to stay this close. They can literally, and like, just show you the range, like how safe you can be relatively. Like, that's only 4 inches, and you'll still fight 5 in the combat head. There you go. That's probably as far as I'd do it anyway. Fight 5. And you're that far away. That's pretty crazy. Then, I'd probably bring a couple of Black Dragon Cataphracts along with him. That's your 80-man warband. Um, and the only reason they're in here is it's always good to have Cav uh, protecting your pike blocks. So it can't get easily flanked. And they're free to be Black Dragons. Cool. The other little tip is give these guys axes. I've said it before. It works so well. Yeah, give them axes. Strip them forward when you need to, when you think, yep, I've got this fight. Okay. And then we've got... Grogu, I know his name's not Grogu before anyone says anything. Um, I mean, you're going to bring a drummer in every list because drums are cool and they make you march faster. Okay, basically, it's a free 12 inch heroic march for your entire army, which is crazy. 12 inches is going to get like everyone here. So you're going to be the fastest faction, highly defense, high, like pretty high defense faction. Like, the only thing beating you is dwarves and heroes for defense. Um, you've got the most heavily armored. Uh, cavalry because they've got their shield wall so they go up to like defense seven okay and the mounts go up to defense six when they're touching two other dudes with the same rule so that's pretty crazy on top of that you can bring a captain so you can be flying across the board for what six inches plus three nine inches plus three uh, which is yeah 12 inches nine 10 11 12 yeah 12 inches 12 inches a turn so, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that might be a typical band you might see with the Dragon Emperor. Okay? Unless I missed something. I mean, I'm sure you can bring some of these. Um, Grogu, I like. I mean, he's not, like, a must-have, but I always like having magic in my lists. Um, especially something like Fury, because I know these guys are defense uh, courage four, but, I mean, now they're fearless, so, yeah. Very anti-Angmar. I like it. Okay? Um, Dragon Cult Acolytes, like six might be a bit too much, but at least three I think is pretty handy just to have those long bomb charges. Six is good because the reason I like six I guess is all the throwing weapons, plus that's 12 attacks right there. It's quite a good flanking force. I like it. Okay. And plus people are kind of scared of throwing weapons. Um, yeah. And then we've got Rutabai. Okay. So if she's rocking around on her own. She can sit quite comfortably in front of a phalanx, okay? Quite comfortably, because she's got the phalanx special rule. She's pretty good. She's strength four, so she's got some killing power in the front. She's also fight six, so you've got fight six part of your phalanx. Um, yeah, can't really go wrong. Make sure you keep some cab with her, so she can't get flanked too easily. But yeah, overall, I think they're, they're pretty solid. They got the buff they needed, most of it. The downside to Eastlings now, okay? The big flaw, and if you watch my last one, I think I told you, um, is their killing power. Okay? They're all strength three. Like, apart from the heroes, apart from you, you're strength three. But that's strength four. That's strength four. Everything here, unless you start putting axes on things, is strength three. Okay? And when you go up against defense six, you're winning them on sixes. And a lot of things is defense six. Lots. Okay? If you go against orcs, it doesn't really matter. But if you go against Moranans, you're winning them on sixes. Okay, elves, you're winning them on sixes. Um, whilst thing, uh, most other factions have some kind of strength four. So if you go against fighting Urukai, for example, uh, pipe block versus pipe block, you might. I think you'd win on fights if you've got this guy around. But if you don't, I mean, they're, it's hard to say. It's just their strength four. Their strength four will chew you through you. Because defense six is solid, but as soon as you fight strength four, they're winning you on fives instead of sixes. It's just so big, which is why I was so disappointed when these weren't stripped for. So I was hoping, and I mean, he's got a load of toys to play with, but I would have liked a similar to Thranduil, but maybe not as strong. So maybe plus one strength aura, or I mean, plus one to wound would be all right if it was like three inches. That's not too bad, although that might be broken. But then again, I say that's broken. Have you seen some of the other legendary legions and the plus ones to wound they give them? 
Okay? But someone like Lothlorien has more plus ones to wound than I've ever seen before. They're plus one to wound in combat. They're plus one to wound in shooting. It's just, it's absolutely bonkers. So why couldn't we get our little Eastling boys a plus one to wound somewhere? Okay? Because they don't have two-handed weapons. Apart from him, he's got a two-handed weapon. I think Amdor has one. She doesn't. And he does. Like, they're your plus one to wound options. When you're going against things like the Balrog, like, what, what, what are you realistically going to do? You don't have amazing magic to deal with it. Not that it's easy to deal with a barrel of magic. Throw your hero at it. He's got Elven Maid. Amdor's got Elven Maid. That's your best bet. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. Plus one to wound is just so key. Like, just give them the option to have some kind of lance would be good, actually. I'd take that. But, yeah. So, Eastlings. I still think they're solid. Ah, they're up, like, upper part of mid-tier, I think creeping into like i don't think they're top tier yeah i don't know top of mid tier definitely okay i don't play eastlings very much i played them a little bit just testing this legion out and they, they they work they do their job they go and pike blocks and stuff like that like i've seen some lists and i'm not a massive fan of it where you just spam like dragon knights but where are you i've got dragon knight spam dragon knights and dragon knights are insane they're amazing they're strength four they've got three attacks Four on the charge, so they are fantastic and they're relatively cheap. Okay, but if you're gonna do that, don't bring the legendary legion. There's literally no point. Okay, because it's all about this dude and what he does is buff warriors, and this guy's not a warrior. So, yeah, I mean, twelve inch banner is pretty tasty. I guess. Yeah. So yeah, it's up to you, hey run. Let me know in the comment section down below how you fared with this new legendary legion. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you think? Do you do they need something else? Or are they too much? Are they overpowered? They're definitely not. But let me know what you think in the description down below or the comment section. Anyway, that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do consider hitting the like button. It's really good for the channel and lets me know you're enjoying these kind of videos and I'll make more of them. And if you're feeling especially saintly today, do consider subscribing. Or, failing that, joining my Discord saver. Um, loads of cool stuff to chat about in there and i'm on it quite a lot so yeah but even if you don't do any of those things i still hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and i'll see you in the next video <gasps> goodbye